Hi boys and girls, I'm coming to you from my library as usual. But today I want to talk to you about some famous artists. And I have a series of books. I think there's three or four of them in my collection. And I used to read them to my kids when they were younger um, to just introduce some of the famous artists to you. And I know some of you love to draw and I know some of you are really very good at it. And maybe that's something you might pursue in your life to be a really, really good artist and study some of the great artists and their works. Um, or maybe you've gone to an art museum like the Museum of Art in Boston. And uh, a lot of the museums actually are letting you tour their museums for free right now online. So that's something you could check out with um, an adult in your house and see if there's a muse an art museum online that you could go on and tour and see their paintings. So since I can't go to a museum right now, I thought I'd sh share one of the books in my series of some of the artists that I really like, actually. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use this book. Um, and it's called Make Van Gogh's Bed. But what's fun about this book is each of the artists um, are, that are featured, we, you see one of their paintings and then I have a little information that the author shares with me. But there is so much more to learn about each of these artists. Maybe you'll pick one and um, go ahead online with mom or dad or find a book and uh, go and learn much more about them and see a whole host of all of their paintings but this is just to give you an idea of some of them and you might already be learning about them in art class um but i wanted to share it with you and i hope that you enjoy this picture walk and this study of some of the great artists i would love to know what you like the most about this or what artist paintings you found interesting or exciting and let me know uh which painting you liked the best. I'd love to hear you. You can contact me by email or regular snail mail and I'd be happy to hear from you and you know I'll get back to you. So the very first one is this one and this is by an artist named Vincent Van Gogh and this is his bedroom, his actual bedroom in real life that he had. Now these artists are from the 19th century, which means the, a lot of these paintings were made in the late 1800s. So we're going back 200 years ago or more, but their paintings are still in our great art museums and we're still studying and learning about them. That's how important they were and their works were. So this is Van Gogh's bedroom. His house was actually yellow on the outside because his favorite color was yellow. And here, if you look, the author has us pull down the bed. So his bed is being made right there. Hello. <laughs> Do you like his bedroom? And he has two of his other paintings. One of two of his favorite paintings are on the wall that he put up there. I think they were done by him. I'm not sure. I'm looking there. And he... Um, he also did a painting that was called Starry, Starry Night. You should look that up because that's one of his really, uh, really famous ones. Van Gogh and some of the artists that I'm going to talk about today were considered impressionists. And so they like to capture everyday moments, just simple moments, almost like you were just taking a picture of something happening, happening in a moment in time. So in this case, it's just his bedroom with his bed getting made. Uh, one of the things that I found really interesting that I learned about him is that uh, he only sold one painting in his whole life. But many years later, hundreds of years later in the 1990s, he actually sold one paint. One of his paintings sold for 75, listen to this, $75 million his painting sold. But when he was living, he only had sold, sold one painting. So Painters at that time often did not make a lot of money with their works. It came later. The next painting is by Paul Cezanne. It's called 
still life with cherries and peaches. So stretch your arms and grab a peach and let's meet the girls down by the beach. So that's what our author wrote. So here is the painting by Cezanne and it's a still life. So it's capturing a moment in time. You see the bowl of cherries and the bowl of peaches, just an everyday moment. Now, Cezanne was known as the father of modern art. So everyone kind of looked to him and he kind of set the tone for um, what modern art might look like. And I'm just going to look at my notes here. You can keep looking at that and figure figuring it out. Um, I want to look at my notes. It says he's described as the father of modern art. And, oh, he, he this is interesting. Cezanne had a... A parrot and his parrot would say let me just look at my notes he would say Cezanne is a great painter Cezanne is a great painter so he trot his parrot to tell him how good he was which I thought was kind of cool and he created over 200 200 paintings but he was really famous for his paintings of fruit um, like this one Let's look at our next artist. Our next artist is Paul um, Gauguin. And it says, before we go, we'll feed the pups and don't forget to count the cups. This is a still life. It's called Still Life with Three Puppies. Still Life with Three Puppies. I know a lot of us like animals in our class and puppies, so you might like this one. So here it is. You see the fruit here. And the cups but look at the puppies one two three still life with puppies and it said that um let me just look at my notes oh he moved to tahiti where he lived and painted for many years and he loved to paint people fruit and scenery um Yeah, so he liked to paint people, fruit, and scenery, and he was known for his really bright, vivid colors um, that he incorporated into his paintings. So maybe you'll like that one because of the puppies. There's a couple of more. Just hang with me. Are you thinking about which one you like so much so, uh, so far? Um, this one says twirling two twos, one, two, three. So if you're a ballet dancer, you might like this one. The girls are waiting by the sea. This is called Les Toiles. And if you look here, the ballerina has a tutu. Here's her tutu. You can touch it and play around with it. And actually, Degas, I learned about in college many years ago. And I love Degas. And I went to a museum where they had... Degas paintings, but they also had sculptures by Degas who made these beautiful, beautiful uh, sculptures of ballerinas. And I always admired them and loved them. And I used to do ballet when I was a little girl. So I think maybe that's why I was connected to this painter. But uh, I do have kind of a special place in my heart for this kind of paintings because I just, I just am drawn to them, I think, because of the dancers. Uh, let me just see what other little notes I had. Are you liking this one? Um, so on this one, oh, hold on. On this one, what I wanted to share was, oh, it was as Degas got older, his eyesight, his eyesight began to fail, so he started making mating making the sculptures but one of his favorite um things to to draw or to sculpt was definitely dancers so like me he was drawn to the same thing but he moved to sculpting because his eyesight was getting poor and he couldn't paint as well so the next one says through the garden run 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 and pull her red bow just for fun um we wouldn't do that right we're not going to pull anybody's bow off her hair um, but this is a girl with a watering can by someone named Pierre Auguste Renoir. So here is Renoir's painting of the little girl and there's her red bow in her hair. But 
we're just going to leave it there. We're not going to be yanking on it, right? So there's her bow. I like the color of her dress. I think it's kind of cute. And I like her clothing. And I like that she's outside. Uh, but again, just um, these artists would just capture everyday little moments. So this little girl was just in her garden playing maybe or helping water uh, things in her garden. And um, I'm not sure how you feel about this painting or if you like it, let me know. So let me look at my notes again. Girl with a watering can. It says that Renoir's family worked in the clothing industry and he was very fascinated and interesting, but, but um, interested in um, costumes. So that makes sense. And he would use the bright blue dress to draw the viewer's eye in toward the girl. So you could, the bright blue, so she wouldn't get lost in the background of the beautiful landscaping. So your eye goes right to her dress. Um, so I like that one. I still like the ballerina the most, you know, Degas. But you might like uh, this, this painter, Renoir. You might like the way he does things or he did things. The next one, we've seen so much along the way, and now it's time to dig and play. Dipping toes in sandy feet, a purple bay, and friends to meet. This one is by a female artist, and female artists back at that time, it was very hard for their paintings to be shown. It was The artist world was very um, run by and dominated by male artists, and it was very hard for women to break through in the art world or to get any money for their paintings or for, for people to even really pay attention to their paintings. So she... Um, kind of broke new ground for women. So um, I think that's kind of cool. And here's her painting. It's called Children on the Beach. And there they are. And um, the book lets you touch the sand here. I'll just scrape it. Yeah, I'd like to be on the beach. Yeah, I might not be on the beach for a little while, but eventually we'll, we'll all be back to the beach. But we can certainly close our eyes and we can listen to the sound, remember and imagine the sounds of the beach and the waves. And we can go on the computer and there's pictures and videos of beaches and we can close our eyes and think of all the things that are down at the beach. Um, so here they are. They're on the beach playing. And you can see the boats and everything in the background. Do you like to go to the beach? And do you like to play like they're playing? Let me see some notes about her. Like I said, she was the first uh, big female artist. It said she painted many pictures of her nieces and nephews and the children of her friends. She never married and she never had children. So she painted other people's children. And many of her paintings are down at the seaside. And she is actually an American painter. And she was one of the only American Impressionist painters in Paris at the time. So she really was one of the women that really broke new ground. So that's kind of cool. Let me know if you like her painting. Uh, this one is a really famous painting. And for me, it's very calming. It's called The Water Lily Ponds Green Harmony. And it was done in 1899 by Claude, Mon Claude Monet. And I happen to like a lot of Monet's paintings. You can see Monet's paintings on a lot of things like little note cards and things like that. But I think this is really pretty and very calming. It looks like a place that I might wanna go and just sit and think or listen to the water. You might even see some fish down in the water there if you were looking up from that bridge. So this is Claude Monet and what I wanna share with you about that, let me see. Um, let me look at the back of my book for a minute. I do want to try to share just a quick something about Monet. How are you enjoying this? Are you finding things you like? Yeah, so Claude Monet, let's see. This is called The Water Lily Pond. And it says, Dor Monet's lifetime most artists painted indoors. But Monet, Monet liked to be outside. He really liked nature. And he would paint the same scene many different times of day. So it would look different every time he painted it, depending on the light. So if it was morning or night or the sun was just setting, the light would come in differently. And the painting would look slightly different because of the way he saw things from the bridge. 
And again, this was in France and he would do it in all different weather conditions too, because when you look outside, if you look at something, it might not look the same on a sunny day as it would a rainy day. So try that sometime, look out at something in your yard and then kind of look at what all the details of it and then see what it look might look like at nighttime or then what does it look like when the sun's just setting and that affects light definitely affects how we take when we take pictures or when we draw things or when we paint and he painted many many images um of nature and really liked water lilies that are in the water lilies that are in this just a couple more I want to share. I Like I said, I have three or four books in this series, so I have quite a few, but these are some of my favorites. It says, please close the curtain. Don't make a peep. Hush now, the baby is almost asleep. This is called The Cradle by Bertha Morisot. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I hope I am. You can check it out for me. Morisot. Um, don't know a lot about this painter, uh, but I'm looking at it, and it's called The Cradle. And if you take the veil, the curtain, and behind the curtain is the baby fast asleep. Do you like that one? I don't know a lot about that painter. Let me see if they give me any notes in the back. Oh, it says, um, this painter began painting when, her, oh, it's a woman, when her mother suggested that she and her sister take art lessons so they could present a birthday gift to their father. So she and her sister would paint and they would make gifts. And all of her paintings include scenes from her life and many feature her own daughter. And in the cradle, her most famous painting, Morisot shows her sister gazing at her newborn daughter. So this is the painter's sister looking or gazing at her new baby. So she liked to paint things of things that were actually happening in her house and of her family members. So that was a new artist for me. I didn't know anything about this painting. I think I might go online or see if I can find some more out. Earlier I mentioned uh, Vincent van Gogh and this is Vincent van Gogh's probably the most famous painting and it's called Starry Night. And there's a song called Starry Starry Nights about the painting and about the about the artist. But it says it's dark outside, stars are shining bright. Pull up your covers and say good night. And this is the starry night. And I think you probably have seen this before. I'm guessing that you have learned about this in art class or you've seen this before. I just have a feeling a lot of times um, this painting gets taught to children early. Um, there's something about it I think that really children like. I think the colors and the swirls. And if you touch this, this book is a touch and feel book. So you can kind of touch here. And it feels, it's all glittery. So it says the stars are shining bright. There's the stars and they're all bright. And you can touch them. But I like that one. Do you? And did you see it before? I bet you have. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that you have. But it says Vincent van Gogh taught himself how, how to paint. So he taught himself how to paint at the age of 27. And he painted over 800 paintings. But Starry Night is his most famous work. I thought so. It said he was in a hospital when he painted it. And he painted the scene from memory. So he had seen this up in the sky. And it was something that stood by him. And when he was in the hospital, he painted it. Wow, I didn't know that part. That's kind of cool. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. But, you know, if you wanted to order this online, um, you might be able to get it from Amazon or from Barnes & Noble or a bookstore. Um, and there's a whole series, like I said. So this one's called Make Van Gogh's Bed uh, by Julia. Julie, it looks like Apple or Appel. It's not spelled like Apple. It's A-P-P-E-L. But... It's called Touch the Art, so you can interact with the art, kind of a touch and see book. So I'm not an art teacher, but I do like looking at other people's art, and I do love going to art museums, and especially the Museum of Art in Boston. But many of our big cities have 
beautiful museums with art in them. Or you can even, if you can't go to a big museum, you could go to the Fitchburg Art Museum right here, very close by to my town, because you know I'm from Townsend. So the next town over is Fitchburg and they have a little museum, but there's a lot of cool things going on in that museum all the time. So um, that's kind of a, and, and if you go to the library, a lot of times you can get free passes uh, to go, or you can get tickets that are very cheap. So think about that. That might be something you could do in the future. Um, go on a trip to an art museum. But in the meantime, go online. See if you can find uh, museums that you could tour right now online. I'm going to do that. Um, so that's something you can do uh, with someone in your house during the day. You know, take your brother or your sister along on a tour of the art and see if you find any of these paintings in the art museum. That'd be kind of cool. Let me know what you decide. Let me know if you go on a tour online of one of the museums or let me know which one, which of these painters you like the best. Write me, email me, let me know. I'm really curious. You could even tell me at morning meeting if there's time when we're doing shares. So that's what I'm bringing to you today. Bye guys. Miss you all the time and think about you every day. And um, I know we'll see each other again. Take care. Bye.